Throughout the Second World War, the largest concentration camp established by the SS in the Third Reich was Auschwitz. It was a former World War I camp and a Polish army barracks, but following the occupation of Poland, the SS sought to create a new site which would carry out the evils of the final solution. Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, approved the creation of Auschwitz in April 1940, as it was recommended by Rudolf Hirsch, who was sent to examine the area. Hirsch later became the commandant, and for his crimes, he was taken back to the camp which he oversaw, and was then hanged on a specially built gallows. But inside of Auschwitz, it was estimated that at least 1.1 million people were killed inside the barbed wire fences. Gas chambers were used to exterminate and kill prisoners on an industrial scale, and still today the full story of Auschwitz has not been fully uncovered. When the Red Army liberated the camp, they found death on a huge scale, and the prisoners who managed to survive told of the horrors. There was a women's camp established at Auschwitz, but women in particular had a very tough time there, and many were never even allowed inside of the camp, and were killed instantly on arrival. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of the women of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. When Auschwitz was initially opened, with the first 30 prisoners arriving on the 20th of May 1940, very few would have imagined how the camp would grow into the huge killing site of the Holocaust. Over the following months, new parts of Auschwitz were created, and the first mass transport of prisoners was solely male prisoners, around 700 Polish prisoners, including Catholic priests and Jews. By the end of 1940, the SS had taken possession of a huge amount of land around Auschwitz, which was regularly patrolled by the Gestapo and the SS, and over the following year the camp grew, with thousands of people in prison there. The first thing a prisoner saw at Auschwitz was the Arbeit Mac Fry sign once they arrived, and they were then admitted into the camp. Exterminations at Auschwitz occurred even before the women's camp was established, as Hearst wrote in his memoirs that, in the spring of 1942, the first transport of Jews or earmarks for extermination arrived from Upper Silesia. However, it is believed that on the 15th of February 1942, a transport of Jews from Buefen in Upper Silesia arrived at Auschwitz I and were sent to the gas chamber straight away. One eyewitness stated that these prisoners that were sent there were the women of Buefen, meaning that as soon as the extermination began at Auschwitz, women were being sent to their deaths. Many women were living in misery inside of the ghettos in Poland, and many found themselves living inside of occupied lands. Jews and other people that the Nazis deemed as undesirable were then forced into the ghettos, or were transported to extermination camps where they were simply killed upon arrival, or they were either sent to concentration camps. They had a greater chance of survival at concentration camps, but were forced to leave their homes, families and belongings, and many took their children with them to places such as Ravensbrück, an all-female camp, Sachsenhausen and also Auschwitz. The majority of prisoners were transported from the ghettos and their hometowns and cities via trains, and inside these transport trains many women, along with their children, were forced to undergo a very long journey with no food. Many of the people on board transports never made it to Auschwitz alive, and died from the starvation and suffocation inside the trains. But the most harrowing part of the journey came when they arrived at Auschwitz. The women along with children were offloaded from the trains, and then on the railroad tracks, and at the station the selection process took place. During this, SS men and women, including doctors and senior officers, would patrol in and out of the new inmates, and they would play God with people's lives. They would select who would live and who would die, and women and children had a lower chance of survival following the selections than men. During selections, those who were deemed able to work were sent to the right and were admitted to the camp, and the rest were left to be sent to the gas chambers. The groups who were selected to die mostly contained children, women with small children, the elderly, and others who were deemed less fit than others. If someone even had a small scar, they could be seen as unfit, and then they were loaded onto the trucks or marched to the gas chambers. They were then taken to their place of death, and were forced to undress in the dressing room, before they were sent into the gas chambers and were killed. One account of this says, it would be difficult to even imagine that so many people would fit into such a small room. Anyone who did not want to go inside was shot or torn apart by the dogs. They would have suffocated from the lack of air within several hours. Then all the doors were sealed tight and the gas was thrown in by way of a small hole in the ceiling. There was nothing more that the people inside could do, and so they only screamed in bitter, lamentable voices. Others complained in voices full of despair 
and others still sobbed, and sent up a dire, heart-rendering weeping. And in the meantime their voices grew weaker and weaker. Because of the great crowding, people fell on top of another, as they died, until a heap arose consisting of five or six layers, atop the other, reaching a height of one metre. Mothers froze in a seated position on the ground, embracing their children in their arms, and husbands and wives died hugging each other. Some of the people made up a formless mass. Others stood in a leaning position, whilst the upper parts from the stomach up were in a lying position. Some of the people had turned completely blue under the influence of gas, whilst others looked entirely fresh, as if they were asleep. Once admitted into the camp, women had their heads shaved and were tattooed, and then disinfected before they were given their striped prisoner uniform. Around 30% of the registered prisoners at Auschwitz were women, and the first mass transport of them was made up of 999 women from Ravensbrück, who arrived on the 26th of March 1942. The women held there initially were classed as criminal, political or asocial inmates, and they were then taken there as founder workers of the women's camp. It was said by Rudolf Hurst in regards to male guards that it was easy to predict that those beasts would mistreat the women over whom they exercised power, spiritual suffering was completely alien to them. These first women were given serial numbers from 1 to 999, then along with the women came a number of female guards, including Johanna Langefeld, who became Auschwitz's first Lagerführerin of the women's camp. More women arrived on the same day and over the next few days. To begin with in Auschwitz, women were held inside blocks 1 to 10 inside of Auschwitz 1, but in August 1942, 13,000 women were transferred to the new women's camp found inside of Auschwitz 2 Birkenau, the main extermination complex of Auschwitz. However, the conditions inside the women's camp were known for being absolutely shocking. When a group of male prisoners arrived there to create a hospital and infirmary, they were given the job to begin with of working out who was actually alive and who was dead. There was a huge problem with disease, starvation and malnutrition, and to begin with things were completely terrible. One former inmate of the women's compound wrote, There was one latrine for 30 to 32,000 women, and we were permitted to use it only at certain hours of the day. We stood in line to get in this tiny building, knee-deep in human excrement. As we all suffered from dysentery, we could barely wait until our turn came, and soiled our ragged clothes, which never came off our bodies thus adding to the horror of our existence by the terrible smell that surrounded us like a cloud. The latrine consisted of a deep ditch, with planks thrown across it at certain intervals. We squatted on those planks like birds perched on a telegraph wire, so close together that we could not help soiling one another. It was also found that the water inside the camp was heavily polluted by human waste, which was causing disease and also thirst within the female prison population. Some historians have argued that the situation in Auschwitz for women was much worse than it was for men, as in one area there was just one tap for 15,000 women and the conditions of the barracks were awful. Women did bond with each other differently as opposed to the men who did not particularly bond. They would sometimes share their bowls and meals which was imperative for survival, but they were overseen by a number of female guards who were completely savage. Langefeld was later succeeded by Maria Mandel as the head of the women's camp and she was known for being a brute. She inspired the other female guards to brutalise the prisoners, and many of them including Irma Grazer and Elizabeth Falkenrath, whipped and beat prisoners until they were a bloody mess, and on occasion some were even killed by the guards. Also SS guards would patrol the camp with their dogs, and they encouraged the animals to attack and maim some of the women, who would not work hard enough. This resulted in death a number of times, and the guards became nicknamed for their sadism, for example Johanna Borman was named the woman with the dog. Executions also occurred inside the roll call yard, and women who were found guilty of breaking the rules were often hanged in public. A number of executions did take place with female prisoners forced to watch the horrific spectacles, and many women were hanged en masse, and were then left hanging once dead as a reminder to the other prisoners for days. In terms of the day, it began earlier for women, when a block supervisor sounded a gong, and then entered the barracks and started beating the women with sticks, to make them go and wash and use the limited toilets quickly. Sanitation as mentioned was truly awful, then the women would be forced to stand for roll call, and they could be forced to stand for hours on end, and beatings and collective punishment were sometimes given out for even the most minor infringement. If a female guard was in a bad mood, then the prisoners would feel it badly. Some women would go off to work in other areas of the camp, such as Canada, where they would sift through the belongings they had confiscated from other prisoners. 
There was also a women's camp orchestra established to play during roll call. But many of the women were also forced to take part in brutal medical experiments that occurred at the hands of the SS doctors inside of Block 10. Many arrived there perfectly well, but were killed by injections or what they had done to them. Thousands of women who arrived at Auschwitz along with their children never made it through the gates of the horrific compound. They were killed as soon as they arrived, and throughout the years in which it was in operation, over one million people died there through mass extermination, execution, poor conditions, disease, starvation or horrific experiments. Many of the women who were liberated told of the true horror of the camp, and many were found heavily emaciated and suffering greatly. Their stories are many of Auschwitz's history which remain untold, and today many of the secrets and brutal acts of Auschwitz still remain a mystery. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.